Have you ever heard of Acrox, Achenar and Hadar? If they don't ring a bell, it may be that's because you live north of the equator. In today's video we're going to be looking southward and find out about some of the brightest stars the southern hemisphere has to offer. So, let's get to it. So, first of all, where are they? Well, Acrox is 320 plus or minus 20 light years from Earth. It forms the bottom of the Southern Cross as we can see here, and is made famous on, obviously on the flags of Australia, New Zealand and Brazil. Achenar, a giant blue star that's more famously known as Alpha Eridani, is 139 light years from Earth. It's far enough north that if we find Sirius, move to right and down, we're very, very nearly there. Elite level astronomers may even be able to follow the Eridanus River all the way down. Hadar, probably better known as Beta Centauri, is found by finding the middle of the Southern Cross, as we can see here, and using the two central stars to point leftwards towards the two other bright stars. On the left, Alpha Centauri, on the right, Beta Centauri, or as it's now known, Hadar. So, you might wonder how these stars rank on stellar classification. First we see here the Sun slap bang in the middle of the mainstream, a G-type yellow dwarf. Next what we have to know is Acrox is actually a star system, of which the largest components are two B-class stars. A1 as we see has 7.8 solar radii and 17.8 solar masses, where A2 has a slightly smaller radius at 5.4 is 15.5 solar masses, so slightly smaller. Again, we stay on the left of the main sequence to find Achenar. It's also a B-class star. Achenar has 6.7 solar masses. The interesting thing is that it's a strange shape and rotates very quickly, as many as 250 kilometers per second. This makes Achenar an oval shape, and as we see here, it has 7.3 solar masses at its finest and 11.4 solar radii at its widest. Hadar, also known as Beta Centauri, is also a star system of which the major stars are AA and AB, again on the left hand side of the main sequence, with 12.02 and 10.58 solar masses respectively, and both have 9 solar radii. All the stars are clearly still on the main sequence but push the upper limit and verge towards giants, as we know. They're all some of the sphere stars. So for now, let's focus on Acrox. Acrox, interestingly, is the southernmost first magnitude star. What we're going to do is we're going to bring it closer as if it were the distance of Alpha Centauri, some 4.3 light years. Remember, Acrox is actually 320 light years away, so that would be almost exactly 75 times closer than it currently is. Let's see how it plays out. We can see in this graphic, winter in Argentina, the sun setting slowly. The twin stars of Acrox 1 and 2 are separated by one astronomical unit. First we see the southern hemisphere famous stars of Alpha Centauri and Canopus shining brightly. Now A, A appears, we can see it becomes far and away the brightest star in our sky. Its companion AB is almost as bright and both have apparent magnitudes of slightly less than minus 10. In reality, of course, we see them as one single star at minus 11, as we see on the right. Although not as bright as the full moon, Acrox would be massively brighter than anything else we've ever seen in our skies. Interestingly, some believe Acrox is actually the star of Bethlehem that brought Margie to baby Jesus. It's also known as the star of Magallanes, or Estrella do Magallanes in Portuguese. So, let's change the parameters once again. What we're going to do is add Hadar into the mix. We're going to move both stars across to the distance of Sirius to see what might happen. Sirius, obviously, is currently the brightest star in our sky. Let's see if these giants could replace it at 98.61 light years distance. First, we see here in San Francisco, California, Sirius and Canopus are currently the two brightest stars in the sky. Hadar in Arabic actually translates roughly to on the ground, and in the Borung Aboriginals they named it as Burm Burngor, one of two brothers, the other being Alpha Centauri. We see now the combined Acrox A and Acrox B stars at minus 9.67 the 
become far and away the brightest star in the sky. Now, Hadar AA arrives at minus 9.4 in the magnitudes, with Hadar AB slightly dimmer at 9.14 and slowly appearing. The twin stars are close together, so in reality you'd only actually see them as one star, and this one star would be combined in the magnitude, apparent magnitude, of minus 10.03. We can clearly see now that Sirius and Canopus just don't pair up on the same scale as two these stars from the San Francisco sky. I wonder when do these stars actually currently rank on our brightest star in the sky? We see at the top the Sun and go through some very famous stars, Pella, Vega, Rigel. Achenar is 10th on the list at minus 0.46 apparent magnitude, Adar 12, and Aquilx 14. Although they may not be famous stars, they obviously rank very, very highly, and as this video hopes to address, just because they're in a southern hemisphere skies and not less than 50% of the world's population can see them on a daily basis. So, let's change the parameters again. What we're going to do now is move out to 13,000 astronomical units. This is roughly the distance between Alpha Centauri and Proxima Centauri, around 0.2 light years. We're also now going to add action R into the action. To make it more interesting, let's also move our own sun out to the distance of 13,000 astronomical units to see how it measures up compared to these southern hemisphere stars. We see here that in Ecuador, currently see our Earth slowly turning. Sirius, and now the Sun appears at minus 6.26. Remember again, this is at 13,000 astronomical units distance. Next, the strange egg-shaped Achenar at minus 15, which is slightly dimmer than a full moon. Then the Acrux stars, both together shining at minus 17.8, but sub substantially dimmer still than the Sun at planet Pluto. Now, Hadar with a combined brightness of minus 18.14, still less luminous than the Sun from Pluto. Hadar, interestingly, is actually a C5 variable, and it varies in brightness due to the unusual properties of iron in its core. What an amazing sight we see now, as the quadruple star system dances with each other, before slowly setting on the horizon. In our final graphic today, the three huge star systems are still not quite bright enough to light up the planet Pluto from 13,000 astronomical units as we just saw, so let's change the parameters once more. The dwarf planet Sedna, at its furthest distance or aphelion from the Sun, is some 937 astronomical units away. So what ha would happen if we joined the Sun at the centre of our solar system with Acrux, Hadar and Achenar? Would Sedna become a habitable world? Let's find out. So here we see Sedna again at Aphelion, and we can see that the Sun is barely anything more than a very bright distant dot. Sedna stays in darkness for now. Next we introduce the Acrux stars, and at minus 23.50, they're brighter than the Sun of Saturn, and begin to provide substantial light to the dwarf planet. Adar, or up into Centauri, now develops and adds a further minus 23.8 apparent magnitude. The mountainous Sedna surface, red with tholins, is beginning slowly to return to life. Its frozen nitrogen surface begins to thaw out and bubbles outward. Achenar, at minus 20.72, is substantially dimmer than the other pairings. It's actually the least spherical star in the Milky Way that we know of, and in Arabic is known as the end of the river. When we combine all four star systems, we can see it as we see in the bottom left corner, we reach minus 24.45 apparent magnitude which would be something similar to the Sun from the dwarf planet Ceres. Sedna slowly comes to life with its now thickening atmosphere of oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide, but still remains out of reach for the known development of life. Luckily, for our own blue planet, none of the three star systems are close enough to damage our fragile existence. With certain limitations, Acrox, the star of Magellan, Hadar, one of two brothers, and Achenar, the end of the river, are certainly wonderful stars that we should take seriously. The future for the stars is going to be spectacular. Both the Hadar and the Acrox systems are candidates for double supernovas. One day, in around 7,000 years, Achenar, migrating ever northwards, will be able to see from England and Germany. Maybe by then we'll have left our own planet, migrated to the stars themselves. Thanks for watching the video. And please don't forget to like or share or even click the notification bell if you want to be updated on when I release new videos. 
You may enjoy other videos from our Brightest Star series, which is a bit like this one, where we look at Red Dwarf Stars, or perhaps Vega, and Altair, Aldebaran, and Antares, amongst many others. So don't forget to check those out. Stay safe in these difficult times. And don't forget, if you enjoy this kind of content, to check out our channel, and I'll see you on the next one.